So UG sent me this M708 drawing tablet to review. It's aimed at a beginner digital artist as an entry level device with a decent sized active area to draw on at an affordable price. Let's take a closer look and see how it holds up. Hello, Ryan here. So quick disclosure note before we jump into the review, UG or Yugi, they reached out asking if I'd be interested to review this tablet, but the thoughts here are my own. It's the first of their devices that I'm looking at and I've been using it for about two weeks before putting this review together. So I've done a number of reviews now looking at drawing tablets with beginner digital artists in mind. Normally I recommend that they go for something that is a bit lower on the cost scale, but is not too small. Having the space to draw with your whole arm is important. Express keys, they can be nice, but they're not a necessity. The pen doesn't have to be great, but the line quality needs to be decent, especially if you intend to be doing tighter, neater line work. The M708 certainly fits this criteria. It doesn't feel like a premium device, but it has everything that a beginner would need. Or even someone like me, who's, I suppose, more intermediate, but with beginner mindset, always learning, uh, it does everything that I need it to do. So inside the box, we find the tablet, a USB-A to micro USB cable. I haven't seen one of these in a little while, so perhaps a bit of an older device. Battery-free PO1 stylus, doesn't need any charging, of course. A pen holder, eight spare plastic nibs, and a drawing glove. The tablet offers a good 10 by 6 inch active area, so a bit bigger than what would typically fall under a medium sized tablet. This gives you room to draw with more than just your wrist and works well with your average screen size. I'm using this with a 15.6 inch screen now on my laptop and I feel pretty in control of my cursor movement. I've used similar sized tablets comfortably with 22 inch monitors as well. Now of course this is a screenless drawing tablet, so you're going to be looking at your screen, following your cursor while your hand moves with a pen on a different surface. Now you might think, blech, isn't that weird? And at first it is. I've seen a lot of beginners get quite frustrated with these types of devices, but all it takes is a little time, a little patience, a bit of practice, and it becomes second nature soon enough. So before diving into drawing your OC or painting some epic landscape, start by doing some very basic shapes, spheres and cubes, getting that hand-eye coordination developed first, and then you're off to the races. I also tend to prefer a device like this over a cheaper, smaller pen displays. I just find that it's better for my posture, so this works. Along the sides, we have eight shortcut buttons that you can customize as you like, binding them to your most used keyboard shortcuts and your software of choice. They do already have default shortcuts assigned, so if you're unsure what to set them to, you can just start with these. The overall body of the tablet is matte plastic, but the buttons are more of a glossy plastic, so they do feel different to everything else. They're slightly raised and make quite a clicking sound when you press on them. In the middle, dividing the keys into sets of four, we have this little bar that lights up when you press one of your keys or when you bring the pen down to the surface of the tablet. If you're left-handed, no problem. You can adjust the rotation of the tablet in the driver settings so that your buttons are on the right-hand side. And with the placement of the micro USB in the middle along the side of the tablet, it doesn't put that port in an awkward position when you change the rotation. On the underside, there are rubber feet in each corner to prevent the tablet from slipping around. Next, we have the pen. The PO1 stylus is battery free and it's fitted with a hard plastic nib. There are spares that come inside of the pen holder. It's got the now standard 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity, you'll have 60 degrees of tilt recognition, and there are two buttons along the side that are of course programmable. They make quite a clear, loud clicking sound when you press them. There's no eraser on the back, and this is maybe a personal preference thing, but even with my Intuos Pro Grip Pen, I never flip my pen around, it's just much easier to press one of my shortcut keys. The pen will quickly leave light scratches on the working area surface, but this is normal, it doesn't impact the drawing performance. Unless of course you've been drawing like a caveman and leaving deep cuts across the tablet. As always, before diving into drawing, you'll have to download the driver from the manufacturer's website first. It's all pretty straightforward stuff, easy to set up, nice and colorful. Now this might look a bit different from some other reviews that you've seen, some older ones. The driver used to look quite a bit like XP pens because, well, they fall under the same parent company, so the hardware and software tech can overlap a bit. The pen from this, for example, is pretty much the same as that from XP pens Deco Fun series. Anyway, the driver application now has its own look. I have this running on a Windows 10 machine, by the way. Here you can customize your pen and your tablet settings, adjust the pressure curve for the pen. If you want to press lighter and still get bold lines, then you shift the curve like this, or adjust the slider towards the softer side. You can map the tablet according to your monitor setup here. If you have two monitors, you could map the tablet across both, but it probably makes more sense for most to map the tablet to one and then set one of your tablet buttons to switch between monitors. Alrighty, so I have Clip Studio Paint open over here. 
We're going to do a quick line test. And I've got the standard G pen selected. This is going to change size according to how much pressure I'm applying. And we'll test that first. Looking good so far. Pretty easy to go from light to heavy and heavy back to light. I have noticed on some pens, there can sometimes be a bit of a drastic jump when you're going from a more heavy line down to a lighter one. But here it looks good. As you can see, I also don't have any stabilization active. Uh, and now let's, let's actually quickly check uh, if we do some spirals here quickly. Starting off light into heavy. Looks good. Go heavy into the light. Let's try to keep a consistent weight. It's a little heavier for me on that top bit, but uh, I've noticed this no matter how I draw. It just tends to be, as I'm making that motion, there's a, I'm putting down a little bit more pressure. Let's do some quick lines. And what I'm looking for here is what's going on with the tapering. Is there any weird drastic jumps where it causes a funny little shoestring effect or any weird dots? And from this distance, it looks fine to me. It looks to taper off fairly smoothly. Speaking of dots, you can dot around pretty easily. When it comes to undo, uh, I've assigned one of the shortcut keys here to undo but unlike with the keyboard where I can press and hold Z control Z to undo uh, the shortcut on the tablet it only registers as one action so you can't press and hold to initiate multiple uh, undos this I think is the case with most tablets I haven't come across one yet or I haven't noticed it in any of my other tablets where Pressing and holding the pen button repeatedly enacts uh, an action, but you can press and hold a button to keep a tool active temporarily, like the hand tool here, and when I release, it goes back to the previous tool. Now the real test is with slow angled lines. So I know that for me, I don't have the steadiest hand and we might get a little bit of wobble here. That's not so bad. That's Definitely my hand moving there. As soon as my underside of my arm comes closer to the edge of the, the table here, it has a like, little bump. I've got no stabilization active, so let's also then turn off the pen pressure and the tilt. I'm going to grab a ruler for this. Now we can see with a consistent opacity, consistent size, uh, so what happens here? looks all right there seems to be like a slight bit of movement but that line looks pretty good i'm obviously using the brush quite big here so you do notice some slight waviness but this is not it's not a problem for me especially as a painter if there is even the slightest bit of wobble it's it's really not a big deal but i don't think even for someone doing neat line drawings that this is all that bad you're typically going to be drawing a little bit faster and they are not noticing any weird jaggedness to to my lines so i am all good with this even if you do notice a little bit of of wave you can just add a touch of stabilization to your brush and that should knock it out lastly let's look at the tilt functionality i've got a charcoal brush selected here and while holding the pen pretty much vertical we get this sort of mark, and as I tilt the pen, it spreads out significantly. So that tilt is responding, and I'm keeping this all within a single stroke. I haven't lifted the pen, so this responds really nicely with tilt. Now I'm capturing all this after having worked with the tablet for a little while. I dove straight into my usual tasks after taking the tablet out of the box, and I found no real barriers to me getting my work done. The setup was easy, I could dive straight into drawing. I've been doing some still life studies, Typical thing that a beginner would be doing with something like this, not only beginners. I painted with some friends online on a few live streams and painted Spider-Man a few times because I've been so stupidly excited about Across the Spider-Verse. I'll probably upload a time lapse of this in another video. I'm quite liking how it's going, but it's, it's been a challenge and it still needs quite a lot of work. 
Overall, the tablet handled well any painting or drawing that I needed to do. I didn't try any 3D stuff in Blender because I just haven't had the time to learn how to do that yet, but I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work for that purpose. One issue I did have was that the express keys on the tablet would occasionally get stuck. Pressing them in the middle is no problem, but sometimes, sometimes, pressing more to the side of the button, it wouldn't release properly. So I had the odd moment of trying to figure out why my tool wasn't switching. I typically use my keyboard for shortcuts anyway, so this is not a big deal for me. Of course, having been at this whole art thing for a little while now and using a tablet that I suppose you consider more pro level and comes with a higher price tag, I do have certain preferences with how I like the pen to feel, what sort of size tablet I like, and various other features. The M708 does feel different from what I typically prefer, but I'm quite an easy customer and the important thing is, can I get my work done with this without any major issues? And the answer is yes. As a beginner, is it easy and comfortable to use? Can you start your journey doing online courses and tutorials with this? Also, yes, you really don't need a fancy display tablet to get started on your journey. But what if you are looking for a more pro-level device that is still really affordable? Well then check out this video next where I look at one such option. That's all from me in on this one. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I'll see you again soon for another video.